And I'd like to start a in-depth study of a very common tree in the Appalachian Mountains, um, the hillier areas of the Ohio Valley, the areas that aren't perfectly flat, and similar areas in the lower Great Lakes. And um, one of the first trees I put on this channel back in 2019 was the tulip poplar. It was a fairly short clip, not in depth and didn't show it in all stages of its life. And I'm gonna add to that today and replace it with this uh, longer video set. I'm in some older woods here. This particular piece of woods doesn't have a tulip poplar within my view of this trail. This is the perimeter trail at the Caesars Creek State Park in Warren County, Ohio here, but it does have dense shade and big, large trees. And um, there's a few tulip poplars off the trail here. And this entire loop, this is called the Sugar Camp Loop off the perimeter trail, used to have these large trees. And a tornado came through about eight or 10 years ago and toppled some of these trees and took the tops off some of them. And it's created a place where the tulip poplar can start to regenerate itself. Tulip poplar, as I mentioned in the video called Winter, or excuse me, Tulip Poplar Seeds and Winter Appearance, I mentioned that it's a pioneer species and um, does not regenerate in deep shade, at least not too much. You might find one or two, but if you really want to get some more tulip poplars, you got to have some sun to do it. It often um, overtakes areas that have been clear cut or logged or opened up by storm damage like we're going to find today. So let's go down the trail here and take a look and see what happens when Mother Nature removes some trees. And as we approach the area of this storm damage, you can see there's very few uh, trees growing in the sapling form, uh, small saplings underneath these larger white oaks here. Got a few beech trees coming up in the understory, and that's about it. Well, this was rated F0 tornado, and if this was an F0 tornado, I'd hate to see the mess an F5 or an F3 would make. Because um, it snapped some pretty big trees back here. And maybe they didn't do the rating based on the damage back here. Because this tornado snapped some trees that were a couple feet across. About 8 or 10 years ago. Here's one right here. Again, these beech trees were already here when this happened. This was mature wood. So they're uh, not afraid to take over when there's full sun if they were already established. But you wouldn't expect to find beech trees in an area... It was recently cleared where there were no beech trees. So what I've got here is all kinds of little tulip poplar seedlings coming up. And these seeds would have been here before the tornado, or at least uh, the trees giving seeds would have been dropping seeds before the tornado, but they don't germinate in deep, deep shade. Our tulip poplar leaf is unique. And it almost looks like a tulip itself with those three lobes. And they can get a little distorted when they're really growing fast. We'll look at those in a few minutes. And here's one here about chest high. There's one there with a really big leaf at the top here. That's probably 12 inches across because it's getting, was getting full sun. But I'll tell you what, it's a race to the top right now. These beech trees are also heading up and they're almost shading out these little seedlings of these tulip poplars here so they uh, may end up being the top dog when this is all said and done we'll see and picture the woods where i introduced this uh, set a few minutes ago and that's what this area looked like more than 10 years ago between emerald ash borer damage on this dead tree and storm damage it's now full sun, and yes, it is a race to the top with a lot of pioneer species. And around here, the honeysuckle is one of them. Like it or leave it, it is kind of fragrant this time of year when it's in bloom. And so is our multiflora rose. But out, outbidding them all, and was probably the first thing to seed up here when the storm came through, is a tulip poplar tree here. It's probably not more than 10 years old. And this sucker is already uh, 20 feet high, so they can really take off. And if there isn't a lot of other competition, you can often find pure stands of tulip poplar in natural or man-made clearings. Let's take a look at some more. And there's also several varieties of wildflowers that wouldn't have been found in the deep shade before this area was storm damaged. Got some box elder, 
which will often invade these areas after uh, openings form. And it's found in old fields as well. But again, the tulip poplars went in the race right here. That one's a good 15, 20 feet high. And you can't see it, but the size of those leaves is much larger when it's getting full sun. They can. It's like somebody took a, a cookie cutter with a tulip poplar shape, cut out a tulip poplar leaf out of cookie dough, and then rolled it out. So it's like three times its size. That's what the leaves look like on these saplings that are growing aggressively. And here's one more to look at. Again, probably 20, 25 feet high at this point. And this is less than 10 years since this event happened. It may have already been a seedling here, but I doubt it. Um, so this guy is growing two to three feet a year. And when they're in full sun, they often will. This is in late May, and we're getting a nice sunny stretch of weather here. After a lot of cool, damp, and even snowy weather in April, uh, spring has switched quickly to summer right now. So these things are opening up and growing very quickly, and uh, it's a good time to study them. So um, as the tulip poplar trees get taller, they create, there, there's a um, way to identify them that makes it real easy to tell them from other trees with similar bark they get unique and obvious branch scars and we're going to study those at a park nearby here shortly and we'll continue our study of the tulip poplar trees um, this one's about three inches around this is about 10 miles from where that last video was shot but we're in a stand with a lot of young tulip poplars and some other trees as well um, so after this area may have been cleared for whatever reason, this is what came in and there's a quite a few tulip poplars right here. So I'm guessing this was an area with full sun from either storm damage or had previous uses that were not forest. As the bark gets a little older, it starts to stretch out and you get these white marks between the uh, darker parts of the tree. And as the tree gets wider, those lighter areas actually become small furrows here. This guy's about four inches around. Five inches around on this tree. And these guys are about six to eight inches around. And you can see that lighter color between these furrows. So in the valleys, we get that lighter color. And eventually that just kind of goes away. So um, on the younger trees, that's a good identifying characteristic in the wintertime especially. But also, look at these little V marks. There's a V mark there, there's a V mark right above it, and that's where the branches had grown out. And just like the tulip poplar seedlings, the branches on the tulip poplar need sun. And if they don't get sun, they break off and leave this branch scar. These branch scars are obvious on other trees um, that do the same thing in nature that come in and take over cleared areas. One would be the gray birch. I got a video on that from last year that shows those branch scars. Right down the trail here, some tr trees are just a little bit larger where the branch scars are not quite as V-shaped, but they're still obvious. And just about a quarter of a mile past that last stop, again, we've got a whole bunch of tulip poplar trees back here, about the same age. 8, 10, 12 inches in diameter, maybe 30, 40 years old. And branch scars kind of get a little moldy and mildewy when they're in this moisture woods here. They kind of get discolored. And that's more from just stuff growing on the bark where the branch scar is. It's not the bark itself. It doesn't get that color. But um, I've noticed that as you're hiking in areas where there's deep shade, these tulip poplar trees get like these blemishes on them around the branch scars. And sometimes it looks really obvious like on this guy right here. So a tree of similar size with similar bark like an ash or a hickory would not get that. So that's how we can tell them apart without any further um, study. So branch scars are obvious on tulip poplar trees, but as they get much larger and older, they do go away and the bark becomes quite uniform. Right down the bottom of the hill are some older tulip poplar trees we're going to study and um, compare them to what we've just seen. There's some more branch scars right here. And boy, there's that multiflora rose that I showed a few stops ago. This guy's in bloom, but again, this was probably open land at one point. And as the shade gets deeper, the invasive plants hopefully will be shaded out and the honeysuckle will be gone and the rose will be gone and we'll get some uh, some good uh, Ohio Valley beautiful wildflower displays in this woodlot maybe in 50 to 100 years. 
And as our tulip poplars get larger, we start to lose those obvious branch scars. It can help us separate it from other trees with similar bark. But one character trait that tulip poplars retain in most situations is a very straight appearance and a very uniform appearance. This tree's about a 14, 16 inches around and it's straight. It does have some lateral branches up about 25, 30 feet here because some breaks in the canopy. But this bark is uniformly furrowed. The furrows don't go terribly far before they converge, maybe four to six inches at this size. Got a larger tree down here. And just look how uniform the furrows are on this bark. There's no surprises with the tulip poplar tree. These furrows are uniform. They're the same depth. They're the same color. And the tree does have a little wobble near the top there, probably from some wind damage. And this guy's probably two feet around. And I mentioned, you know, tulip poplars need full sun or at least partial sun to regenerate. And there isn't a baby one to be found here. This is all Ohio Buckeye and spice bush and pawpaw in the understory here. This is at the lower slopes at the Fort Ancient State Memorial here, just a few miles from where we started this video series. And look how uniformly furrowed this bark is. And this tree's probably almost three feet around and soars towards the sky beyond where I can see. Um, th three feet around may not be that old. They have a pretty steady growth rate. If you ever buy tulip poplar lumber, well, most of the growth rings are at least a quarter inch apart. So that doesn't take long to get to three feet when you're going a quarter inch a year. There's another one here, straight to the sky. So that uniform appearance, the evenly furrowed bark. And there's a whole grove of them right here. So again, this may have been an area that was clear at one time. And like I showed in the earlier parts of this series, if they all had a chance to get started, it's a race to the top. And in this particular part of this grove, the tulip poplar trees have won that race and the other trees are playing catch up. And here's an even more mature tulip poplar tree growing on the banks of this small little rivulet coming down off the hills here at Fort Ancient. This is the north facing slope here. This is moist soil. It's deep soil. The thin rocky side of this uh, park that faces south is where we're more likely to find chinkapin oak, dogwood, and more drought tolerant species. So when you're thinking um, tulip poplar, think moist soil, deep soil, and um, Pretty good land for growing things, including trees. And this guy soars all the way to the top here. He's got to be 120 feet high. This one's considerably older than the one we just looked at. The furrows are up to two inches deep. And at this age, the furrows can go 12, 14, 16 inches before they converge. So it could remind you of a cottonwood tree or even a chestnut oak. But it'd be unlikely to find a chestnut oak Growing next to a tulip poplar, they just have different habitat requirements. I'm going to go on up the hill here. There's one that's in bloom that actually the flowers are close to the ground. But if you're hiking in mature woods here, folks, you're not going to find the beautiful flowers of tulip poplar within your view. They do fall to the ground, and you can find some that have fallen to the ground that still look kind of pretty. But you're not going to find them in sight. So the best way to see tulip poplar flowers is to find a tree that has branches that are reaching towards a sunny area, like a mowed area. Here's a real large one right here. And let's finish our study of the tulip poplar. Again, many of my videos are shot near home here. Got a large variety of trees at this Fort Ancient um, State Memorial here. And there's an old map of it showing some of the mounds, which were all dug with hand tools. And um, these signs give you the dates at which they were dug. I don't have it memorized. But near the edge of the woods, we've got some tulip poplar trees that are old enough to bear fruit or to flower, but have a lawn area here where they can reach out and show us their blossoms. Normally, the branches in the woods that are 
flower wing would be well out of view. But in this case, you're at eye level. So this is May 24, May 21st, 2021. We had a cool spell up until this week. So these may actually be a little bit behind schedule on their blooming. But I could say it looks like a tulip. And the tree here, that's probably not more than 16 inches around, has got hundreds and hundreds of these flowers at all levels of the tree. But as I showed, when the trees are in deep shade, the lower branches break off. You get those branch scars where the branches used to be, and only the top of the tree would have visible blossoms. So if you want to see tulip poplar trees in bloom, you need to find one that has branches that are near eye level, but is old enough to actually bear fruit. Or if you're lucky enough to live in areas with cliffs and you can get on top of a cliff that has a view of tulip poplar trees from above, you may be able to do the same. I'm thinking Red River Gorge and Hocking Hills in this area may have um, opportunities for that. But while we got these guys in plain view, let's just study these leaves one more time. The shape varies a little. As I said, sometimes it looks like it's been cut out with a cookie cutter and rolled out, but here's your average shape with three lobes and the, the middle lobe has two lobes at the end, so you might even say four lobes, but one on each side, one lobe in the middle with two points on either side, and they're very waxy um, in their feel. So it's a waxy feel, it's a dark green. Once the, once the uh, vegetation hardens off for the summer, it's a waxy dark green on one side and lighter on the other side and not as waxy and not as, um, uh, shiny. So this is our tulip poplar, a very common tree in the well-drained, moist soils of the Appalachian Hills, mountains, Ohio Valley, and lower Great Lakes.